spreading color and light to bring hope, knowledge, beauty, inspiration, and healing into this world. We have been uh, very active this year, running 12 Zoominars in the past winter and spring season, and now in the fall season, this is our third Zoom panel. So welcome also to our Zoom panel of today, Color Light and Health, with Rike Gottjell from Denmark, with Nathan Oxenfeld from the US, and with Masako-san, Masako Shimizu-san from Tokyo, Japan. Um, my name is Gabrielle Buresh Teichmann. Color and light are my vocation and my calling. I'm a holistic color consultant and color light practitioner and therapist working now with color and light for over 30 years. I'm also a systemic constellation facilitator, author of a book and the founder of the Color Lights uh, World Project. Very happy to have you all with us here. Please now, if you are so kind to mute your microphone, uh, please stay with us. Uh, the panel is going to last about one hour until uh, five, uh, excuse me, 3, 10 p.m. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So, so you are well, very welcome to stay with us for that as well, because it, this has been very interesting and lively in the past. Uh, you will then receive the replay of today together with a color paper put together by all our speakers. Yes, so we are surrounded by electromagnetic waves. Light and colors have an effect on 80% of our brain activity and a number of biological functions such as nerve activity, blood pressure and hormone balance. In 2002, nerve cells in the retina have been discovered that use melanopsin to send pulses of light to the brain. So that our brains are so receptive to light and color explains why people feel built up and so motivated and happy by light therapy. So our brain is closely connected to color and light. Therefore, we are highly dependent on this light information. So uh, light provides a various uh, broad range of informations and activ activates molecular nerve activity, blood pressure, and our hormone balance. Uh, it synchronizes also our many body rhythms. So it's very important for our internal clock, we can see. And so dynamic light increases on many levels, well-being and health. So the following findings are scientifically proven key discoveries. Light can directly enhance cell metabolism called photobiomodulation. Light traveling the non-visual optic pathway has a deep impact on our hormonal system. And light and color are merged. Like Goethe said, um, colors are children of light and light is essential to life. I want to give you a few examples of proven effects of color just to name a few because chromotherapy works as well on the psychological mind level, as well as on the physical level. That's why we are having uh, practitioners and also medical doctors working with chromotherapy. Red is known to reduce inflammation, is good for treatment of joints, wounds, and arthritis. Orange is known as the antidepressant, antidepressant. It's excellent for prevention and treatment of seasonal affective disorder. It is vitalizing and stimulates the blood uh, pressure and blood circulation. Yellow boosts the lymphatic flow, uh, is very good on a psychological level for detachment and letting go. 
green is for balancing and it's scientifically proven quite lately to be excellent for treating chronic pain and also migraine. That's also a quite new discovery. Turquoise is known to be anti-inflammatory and it boosts physical immunity and mental detachment. Uh, by the way, I have a lot of experience with that. I've been working um, especially in the winter with color light therapy groups and color uh, chromotherapy applied regularly in the fall and winter season uh, has the effect that people don't get sick. They don't get flu. So excellent for immune system. Then blue is known uh, in the treatment of neonatal jaundice. It is very relaxing and very uh, suited for as an anti-stress color. And by the way, blue is the color in chromotherapy with the widest range of um, therapeutical applications. Then we have violet. Violet is known as sterilizing. It kills bacteria and mold. And uh, on the psychological level, it's excellent for meditation and self-respect and self-love. Then we have magenta, which is actually not a, a color of the visible spectrum. It kind of unites the both ends of the spectrum, red and violet. Uh, is excellent for meditation, transformation and change. Very interesting, in the past one and a half years, magenta has become more important, reflecting uh, the situation of our world that is so much in need of change and transformation. Bright light therapy is used for SAD, seasonal affective disorder treatment, and the UVB ultraviolet light is also used for sterilizing and is very important for vitamin D generation. So, and here comes the good news. We, uh, if you look up at the site PubMed, uh, this, this um, platform PubMed, the National Library of Medicine, and you enter the term chromotherapy, you will find over 16,000 entries um, within the past 35 years. So research is really growing exponentially on this field. Um, and in the, since the past 20 years, light medicine is pursued by thousands of researchers including numer numerous conferences also on light therapy and laser medicine. In chromotherapy, we work with the balance between colors, the complementary colors, and this work creates a dim dimension of healing. Therefore, color light therapy is a polarity phenomenon. Uh, Complementary colors do have the opposing effects. And as we, most of you know, if you reunite two complementary colors, that forms the wholeness of white light again. I do uh, have a lot of experience working with um, complementary colors. Here, I want just to give you an example. So this is an example of complementary colors that are used together also related to form because they complement each other perfectly also in the psychological effects in the treatment. Um, so this is uh, very positive to take this uh, into consideration, the complementary colors, because complementary colors need each other and uh, the effects are also complementary. Meaning if a person needs a lot of blue, uh, giving the complementary color orange makes a lot of sense. And so one way of explaining color light therapy is by energy medicine. 
understanding life in terms of fields, of energy fields, rather than molecules, which is matter. So actually we can say we do have a rainbow within. Uh, James Oshman, the excellent uh, researcher on the field of uh, energy medicine says, he, is, uh, he has degrees in biophysics and biology. He says, all of the body's systems are interconnected by networks of connective tissues, the living ma matrix. These uh, networks carry bioelectric signals, including light impulses. These energy waves interact with each other through resonance. So that's a way of explaining. And James Oshman says, it is only a matter of time until energy medicine takes over. This movement is unstoppable and we need to provide clinical validations for that. Yeah, what is the role of, the, of cognition and of awareness uh, on chromotherapy and on treating with color and light? As already said, vision constitutes of 80% of our sensorial input. Light, light reaches therefore more, most of our brain centers and influences every level of our brain processes. The physiological level, the emotional and the cognitive, both conscious and unconscious. So mind has a very positive, a strong influence, powerful influence over the body as scientifically proven in the fields of epigenetics, neuroplasticity, in psycho neuroimmunology, and also in the placebo effect. But we must state that the subjective, subjective effects that colors have, these effects prevent, prevent sometimes the simple quantifications in chromotherapy. So we can say, I want to quote here uh, Anadi Martel, a physicist and a researcher on the field of chromotherapy and also the, the inventor of the sensora, color light, multisensorial so, sensorial device uh, Masako San uh, works with. Uh, so he says, the deepest influence of light and colors may be entirely non-material and rather related to the nature of consciousness itself. So science has, I think, a big challenge in researching consci consciousness. It's a long way to uh, fully researching consciousness. So we can say light and color is physical and transcendental at the same time and has the potential to lead us to openings and breakthroughs. In consciousness. So in my 28 years working as a color light practitioner and chromotherapist with three different methods, I've been working with the Hygieia color light therapy system after Theo Gimbel. I've been working with a spectral receptivity color light device after Dr. Jacob Lieberman, and I'm working with the monochrome color dome of Carl Ryberg. And in all these years of experience, I have observed that color light therapy working together with self-awareness and consciousness of the client makes the therapy highly effective, more effective as compared to simply applying light without any process of self-reflection. So I, I'm convinced and I can say um, combining color light therapy with any kind of awareness and consciousness is very powerful. So light and color are medicine of the present and future. And now I want to 
present our first speaker. So I'm first saying hello to Rike. Maybe Rike, you want to say something that we, so that we can see you? Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if, uh, if you can see me, but I uh, hope you can hear me. Yes, welcome, welcome Rike Gottschelp from Copenhagen, Denmark. Rike Gottschelp is the founder of, of the Gottschelp Institute where she practices and teaches or, um, auricular therapy, acupuncture and chromotherapy since 2004. Her main approach in the work is the one of uh, Dr. Nogier. So hell, hi, dear Rike. Coming to our first question, Rike. How do you use light when you treat as a chromo and auricular therapist? Thank you. That's a good question. So, um, and thank you for having me here in this panel, uh, Gabriel. It's a, it's a very big pleasure to be part of this group. So thank you for that. Um, so how do I use light? How do I use uh, color um, in my work uh, as, um, as, a, as a therapist? Um, well, I use it all the time. It's it's uh, when you are an auricular therapist and you do auricular medicine, uh, uh, color is uh, something that you cannot come around. It's like a necessity to treat. And we use uh, frequencies and we use, um, like we use the color in frequencies, which means that um, the color will do a kind of blinking motion or the light will do a blinking motion. So, when we work with uh, colors, we also work with the frequency because everything is, is a movement. Uh, it all comes in different ways. You could also say that a tune, a piece of music also has a frequency as well as a color has a frequency. So when I work with colors, I have the frequency and the color together. And um, one of the things that uh, tends to get more and more uh, my attention is um, the emission of light from the body as well as the, the, the light coming towards the body. So we have uh, the projection of the body, uh, uh, the, the light that is projected to the body and then the way the body absorbs that color or that light coming towards the body, but also uh, the way we emiss light. So the body, uh, all this selling, uh, all the cells that are uh, in movement, uh, they will also emit light. So we have light coming from inside us, which I think is, uh, is, is quite amazing. And then also the light coming to us, uh, we absorb some of it and some of it we, we send out again. But sending it out, we also, um, it also has an effect on our body. Um, and as an auricular therapist, um, we use uh, different methods. Um, sometimes we, we throw lights up on the body and sometimes we put, um, or we put a color up on the body and sometimes we put color on the body so that it's the lights from inside that can kind of reflect on the color on the outside. So it's, it's a different, it's, it gives different answers from different parts of the of the communicative system in the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So coming to the next question, maybe, uh, Rike, can, us, can you tell us a bit more how you work and how you use with and how you use the color glasses? Yes, I can do that. So as a, as an, um, as a chromotherapist, and I guess that everybody here, is know, here knows, but chromo just is actually the name for color in Latin. So when you do chromotherapy, when you do uh, uh, color therapy, um, the way I do it, we use filters and we use uh, glasses, or I do. So I have these uh, color filters and I also have these glasses. And actually these are the specific ones we have to talk about today, the ones I'm having here. So, voila, putting glasses on like this has an effect on the body. It has an effect on how you 
uh, take the light in. But you don't actually have to have your eyes open. You don't have to have your eyes open to look through the color. The color will get into your system no matter what you have your eyes open or not. So um, this is something that I think it's, it's quite funny. People think that they have to look through a color to have the effect. But actually, when you think about it, you have the color on your body and it has an effect. You know, you have the color in your room and it has an effect. So why would you have to look through the glasses to have an effect? As soon as you put it around your eyes, which are very sensitive, have a lot of nerve interaction, uh, you will have a very huge uh, uh, stim uh, stimulation of the nerve system. So, um, so, so this is, uh, this is the, these are, um, I would say very effective when you put the light on around the eyes. So when I use the, the glasses um, for treatments, it's actually, um, it's something that I, um, something that I like about it is that it actually uses the auricular therapy also, because while we have the glasses on the eyes, we can find points on the ears. It will stimulate uh, different um, emotions or troubles in the body um, so that we can easier find the specific points in the ears that we're looking for. And also we are using uh, a questionnaire technique to get uh, deep into a problem. And this is actually a communication um, system that you maybe know uh, called thought field therapy, TFT. So it's a combination of uh, the chromo, the color and the auriculo and the TFT system. Um, and there are many ways to use these glasses. Uh, let me just explain a bit about how I do it so that you have an idea. So we would have a, 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 a problem. It could be pain, it could be hormonal, it could be skin disease, it could be um, uh, psychological, it could be any kind of problem that you want to work with, any, any kind of imbalance in the body or challenge you have in your life. It could also be difficulties about taking decisions. Uh, it could be anything that you can imagine, except, I mean, lowering your mourn and things like that, but uh, anything with your body, anything that, that you have a challenge with. So what you do is that um, you put on, uh, you. I have the patient lying on the bed and uh, I will ask the question again, like get into this problem, uh, feel it in your body, just close your eyes for a second and just get into the emotion of whatever it is that, that you're dealing with. So if it's uh, something on the skin, I would say, have a feeling, feel, feel your skin, feel how it makes you feel. Um, or if it's a problem with a parent, just get in and make a picture of an image of that person and, and just get into that emotion of, of what you're dealing with right now. And um, once that is done, when you're like lying there and some people will cry, some people will just get like deep inhalations and just some people will jitter. It's, it's very different how we react. Then I always ask people to find out if there is a specific place in the body if they have a specific thought or if they see a color in the body. And actually quite many people say, well, I have a pressure here. And, and when I ask them what kind of, uh, is it, does it have a color or a shape? They could say it has it's a purple color, it's a green color, or it's a round shape or you no, know, because putting all these, um, putting all these, uh, uh, what, how would you say that? Um, putting all these pictures on and images on inside your body uh, makes you very aware of what is going on inside this body. And when you do that, then I put the glasses on and I have like 10 different colors. And these different colors have all have different, uh, bring out different emotions uh, and get into different systems. And then I ask, um, before I put on the glasses, I just forget to say, I will ask them on a, on a level of, uh, of one to 10, uh, how, is, how, how is your uncomfortableness? I don't know how you would say it in English actually, how, uh, how, is, how, is the, how is the emotion right now? How uncomfortable are you? 
And then I will put the glass on and I'll just ask them to get into that picture and ask them, how uncomfortable are you now? Is it more or is it less? So this is a very simple technique. And then you just keep on doing that. And then you find out what glass brings the most discomfort in the body. And then you lie with that glass on. And I mean, that's very, very easy way to work with this view. Actually, you don't have to do more and you will already be on your way. Mm -hmm. If you want to go deeper in that, you would ask the person to get into the emotion like you ask, um, uh, try and feel the pain, try and imagine the pain of your periods. Just feel how you feel when you have that period pain, when you're cramping, and you feel bad. And go into that emotion and they go into that emotion and you can see that it, it's maybe painful. And then I would ask them, uh, do you recognize or what feeling does it put, what, what feeling does it give you? And they can say, I feel lost, I feel grief, I feel alone, I feel solitude, I feel um, abandoned. Um, and I will ask them, try and stay with that emotion and let that emotion like take over your body, just let it spread out in your body so that you can really feel that emotion. And do you recognize this? Do you recognize this emotion from earlier in your life? And then they will go back and they will say, yeah, you know, I had it last month. I say, oh, like last month when you had your period. Yes. To recognize it from before, like from 10 years ago or earlier. Yeah, I remember when I was in school, actually, I would often feel abandoned. You know, it's, I felt just left. And I say, oh, so when in school? Well, that was, I remember this one time. And I would try and take them back to kindergarten or when they were just home with their parents and see if I can go all the way back to like three, four, five years old, because then we are very often at the root. And when we are down at that root, if we go all the way there, they are often confronted with a specific, like, yes, my father abandoned me. He left my mother and he said, you just stay here. And so then you find out that the, that the menstrual pain is the abandonment from the father leaving the family when they were a child or something else. So when you do that travel, then you put, after you do that travel, you put the glasses on and you work on that feeling abandoned. So, and then these glasses, it's like, I worked with one yesterday and uh, she had been kidnapped three times in her life by her by her family that didn't oh not by her family but with the fam from the family that didn't want her to marry their son um, she has a mother in south africa so she's been kidnapped in south africa by roadsides and uh, she has been uh, i don't remember the last one actually but she was kidnapped three times so she has a big anxiety about um, about moving around and um, then we worked on that and now she's just, it's just amazing to see, you know, just after the treatment, I, I can't say how it's going to work the next time. Maybe we would have to go back on it again. Maybe there will be something triggering that from further back. But the set at the, I mean, it takes, it can take five minutes, 20 minutes, and you see a huge difference. And she called me this morning. She wrote to me and she said, the sun is shining today and I'm noticing. Usually I don't notice because, you know, it's just, it's too much for my system. I can't, she's, she's like, she has a kind of PTSD. So she can't take anything in, but she was so happy to recognize the sun today. And it's, well, that's what made me a therapist. Wow. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Can you tell us what kind of glasses are you using for this work? Yes, I'm using a glass type uh, and they change the shapes all the time. But I think they're called Velo. I will I will put the name in the chat so that everybody can see it. And uh, these glasses are um, they are uh, ten. They have ten different colors, which is kind of important. Uh, some some pair of glasses have like seven or eight. Some have uh, ten or twelve. There's different um, different approaches. And this has ten. And I will I see if I can find a link or I will write the name of the company so that you can search for it uh, in a country that is uh, easy for them to send to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rike, you, you, you announced that you want to share a special color with us today. 
Yes, actually that's, I've been looking very much forward to this and it's a color that I've been working with for a while and it's a color that I've been like researching on because um, it's called uh, Baker, Baker Pink, I think. Let me see, why do I forget this now? Well, Baker, Baker Miller Pink. And um, I would actually like to show it to you. It's a special pink. It's actually also the, the color of these glasses, but it can be a bit uh, difficult to see. So I will, um, can you share, can you do so I can share the screen? Yes, yes, yes. Voilà. Okay. Yeah. And here we go. So this is just from the internet. This is just so you can see it. And actually they're showing some of the, uh, the, the um, trials that they've been doing with painting jails in, mm -hmm. in this pink color. And um, it's a pink color that was tested uh, a long time ago. And they tested it in the Navy facilities, uh, federal, um, federal prisons in America to see if it had an influence on, on, um, on the prisoners. And it turned out that it had an, a big effect on the stress level. Um, and then the test has been done again, and they say that it doesn't have the effect that they want. They can see that the anxiety and the stress falls down, but that grabbing something, they have this grabbing technique and seeing if you get stronger uh, from this color and you don't. But in my experience, you cannot always just test something after five minutes and then make that same, what you say, um, line all uh, through everything and say, but because it doesn't work after five minutes, it doesn't work at all. So um, this color has an effect. Well, I think it has an effect on how um, the, what you call it, the, the blood pressure has an effect on your stress level. It has an effect on your anxiety level. And, um, and they are more to, they, they say that it has an effect on other things as well, but this is what I've had an experience with. And we work with this color also in auricular therapy and we work with different kinds of, of, uh, of pink. And this is one of the, the, the special things about auricular therapy, there is not pink. There is this kind of pink and this kind of pink and this and this and this. We have many kinds of, of different kinds of pinks. And I'd like just to show you something uh, just, for, uh, just, just for fun to see the difference. And these two are both pink colors. And I might just take something white and put behind it or yeah. So two kinds of different, different kinds of pinks. And this, uh, this one is acetylcholine. It's a it's um, a hormone a hormone um, uh, well it's a hormone, and it has this color. And then we have the other, which is uh, reflecting the me mesoderm, which is a part of our um, tissue. And these two are both different kind of pinks. So in our system, we work work with very specific kind of pinks. Lovely, thank you. I think I could speak a lot more about it, but I think we don't have the time. Yes, yes, actually that's the biggest challenge for, for today and for all the speakers, because every speaker is a super expert and could speak for hours. So I will give you a, a, a last question asking you to, to answer it very briefly. Uh, how can I use this at home myself, for myself and loved ones? Okay, so let's stick to the glasses because we spoke a lot about the glasses. So I will put the, the name on it, uh, of the glasses on. And then, and what you do is that you buy this, these glasses and they're not, I don't think that they're very expensive actually. And when you want to work with them on yourself or on a, on, on a loved one, uh, you will ask them just to sit in a chair or lie down and then just get into that feeling of whatever it is that's troubling them. And then put on a glass, and just let them sit for like 30 seconds, two minutes, whatever. And then how do you feel now? And see if there is a difference. And then you go through all the glasses mm -hmm. and then you put the glasses that gives a bad feeling to the left or to one side and the other that gives a good feeling to the other side. And you take all the glasses that made you feel better and then you go through them again. And remember that every time you put glasses on, you're already treating. Mm -hmm. So they have already been treated with all the colors and then you go through the two, three, four glasses that's left and you find the best one and you leave them on for 10 minutes. Wow, thanks a lot, Rike. 
well, there's much more, of course, to, to learn, but, but yes. uh, if you have questions, please, uh, maybe you want to direct directly your questions to the speaker. And you find, of course, the websites of all the speakers also on my website, color slash viewers.at, so that you can contact them directly also after this uh, session. Thanks a lot, Rike, for now. And let's see what questions we are getting for your session. Thanks a lot. So I'm coming now to our next uh, speaker. Maybe I want to call Nathan Oxenfeld. Maybe you can say something that we can see you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome, Nathan. Well, Thank you. Nathan uh, Oxenfeld from the US, Burlington, Vermont. He's a certified Bates Method teacher. He's the founder of Integral Eyesight Improvement and the author of Give Up Your Glasses for Good. He's the host of the Naked Eye podcast and Better Eyesight po podcast and the producer of the documentary Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Insight. Very welcome, dear Nathan. Thank you for having me, Gabrielle. It's an honor. Yes. So, Nathan, your first question, what is the connection between color, light, and health? Yeah, I, I see a lot of connections there. And kind of to build off of the wonderful things you shared, Gabrielle, and, and what we just heard from Rike, is with, with my specialty being the eyes, I really like to focus on how the eyes are the some of the main receivers of light and color. I like how Rike was just saying how we can even have our eyes closed and we're still getting the benefit when the, the color lands on the skin, on the body. But the eyes are really the organs of light. You know, it's the only organ in the body where light enters inside the body to really stimulate the brain and the chemicals through the whole system. So when I started learning about the Bates method and, and natural vision improvement, light was a key component of it. And I used to suffer from myopia and astigmatism, and I needed prescription glasses and contacts to see in the distance every single day. And as a way to begin to wean off of those, I had to introduce more light into my system. I didn't realize that one of the kind of side effects or the symptoms of poor vision or refractive errors was what Dr. John Ott calls malillumination. We, we know what malnutrition is, where we're not getting enough nutrients in our diet, but malillumination is more actually when our system is not getting enough light, specifically natural light. So I, I really like to use the sun as kind of my main light source um, and, and also exploring some of the, the, the colors that the sun contains as well, you know, just to introduce that into our system in like a safe and gentle way. Okay. So, uh, and Nathan, how does the Bates method incorporate light therapy? Yeah, it's really getting more sun exposure. Um, I, I've got actually the sun is just rising here on uh, in Vermont coming in through my window here. So right before I came on to speak, I was just actually letting the sun come in and land on my closed eyelids. So in the Bates method, it's called sunning. And the way that I've modified it is, is I call it sun sandwiches, where we actually sandwich sunning and palming. And so what I mean by that is we're just going back and forth between light therapy and dark therapy. Mm -hmm. So we would just do like five to 15 seconds of letting the sun land on our closed eyes. And I'm doing it through a window right now. Ideally, we would actually, you know, be doing it outside with nothing between the sun and us. But then after five to 15 seconds, we just go right into the palming, which is where we just cover our eyes with our palms, just to block the light, not to actually like push on the eyes with the palms. There's no pressure on the eyes. It's just blocking all the light. And so we, we watch the light fade because it goes from really bright to really dark. And then we go back into the light and then we watch the light return. So I like to kind of say that 
we get to watch a, a light show as all the, it's like we go through the whole spectrum because as we go into the palming it gets darker 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 to this kind of deep pitch black color potentially and then when we're in the sunning it gets to this bright white color you know gets filtered through the eyelids so you might be experiencing different effects like that but i like to kind of go on that journey from black to white and then from white to black and sometimes if we do variations of the sunning like one-eyed sunning so we palm one eye and sun the other eye sometimes I, I describe that as like if you have an artist's palette where you've got all your different colors that would be like adding a some black paint to your palette so that you could kind of mix the the colors coming into this eye and then the lack of color here and you can actually kind of perceive different colors that way but my favorite variation on the sunning is is called strobing where you spread your fingers out and you actually wave them in front of your closed eyes in various directions and various speeds and i like to go pretty quickly like this and it it has it's called strobing because it has sort of a strobe light or a kind of a flickering light effect which if you do it for a few seconds continuously you start to experience colors and you'll see greens and purples and blues and golds. And it's like really beautiful to just kind of witness. And then you go into the palming and it all kind of fades away. So it, that's you know a little preview of, of how the Bates method actually uses the sun in the sky to actually boost the health of the eyes, the circulation, light perception, and eventually even like leading to clearer focus sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about the strobing though is obviously if you have any kind of uh, epilepsy things or, or things that might trigger like you would want to avoid that one um, and then just with the sunning in general it's like the one thing in the Bates method where you can do too much of and it could cause damage so we want to be really mindful about just doing little tiny doses of sunlight um, ideally when it's low in the sky like right now 8 50 a.m perfect timing for sunning here on the east coast um so if it's like midday you might want to wait until closer to the horizon mm -hmm. okay. and nathan what if someone is light sensitive or lives in a location that does not have much sunlight yeah that's a great question because it's kind of like um like i said i came into the natural vision healing process mm -hmm. with light sensitivity like I used to wear sunglasses every time I was outside. So pretty much I had to be very gentle. So when the sun is low in the sky, it's going to be a lot less intense. But I actually started to do it through um, leaves in a tree. So actually, like I would stand in some shade. So it wasn't direct sunlight. I would just kind of face towards it. There would be a tree in between me and the sun. And so it was a little more gentle. Or I would do it if it was behind a cloud. So actually doing it on cloudy days is mm -hmm. also fine. Mm -hmm. And that kind of addresses the other part of that question where if you live, you know, in the Pacific Northwest or London or Vermont, <laughs> somewhere that's known for maybe having a lot of gray days or not a ton of sunlight, definitely getting outside and, and doing the clouding where you just face towards the, you know, clouds in the sky, it's not going to be quite as noticeably you know beneficial but you are still getting the benefit um i also am a fan of using these different types of you know red infrared or even just incandescent artificial lights for doing like you know indoor sunning and, and sort of gentle ways to like ease into the natural sunlight um but what's pretty neat is that it doesn't take that much time to adjust Mm -hmm. and actually decrease light sensitivity specifically it's actually training those involuntary muscles in the iris to constrict your pupils um, so you can handle brighter light which could be a process if you're kind of used to sunglasses or you have some light sensitivity mm -hmm. so always always um there's a it's four rules of sunning and the first one is always letting your comfort be your guide so if you're ever doing the sunning or any of the light therapy things and it's not feeling comfortable, 
you might want to kind of modify it or make sure you're feeling safe and gentle with it. Thank you. And how does the Bates method incorporate uh, color therapy? Yeah, that one is, is pretty interesting because, you know, the Bates method is named after Dr. William Bates, who was an ophthalmologist 100 years ago. And he was really studying the effect of sunlight and, and various other things about vision. But you do see color come up in his writings uh, fairly often, actually. And what I wanted to share today on that is we've been hearing a lot about um, colors out there right? So um, whether it's, you know, letting the light come in through the colored glasses or um, putting different colors in your environment to kind of, you know, like the pink jail example and, and how the external colors can affect us. And I love how the Bates method brings our attention to the internal colors too, because Dr. Bates, um, actually the very like forward of his book, Perfect Sight Without Glasses, starts with having you close your eyes and, and we can all do this right now if we just close our eyes and remember a color. Now, if we've all been looking at the screen, like letting the light from the screen come into the eyes, we're probably experiencing some after image, whether it's a quick flash or it might even still be lingering. So sometimes it's actually helpful to palm your eyes. So you actually block out all the light and then you remember a color and it, it's just the memory of a color. It's an internal like thought and to kind of connect with that color in, you know, using, using the visualization and the memory and the imagination can lead to certain levels of relaxation of your visual system that would potentially, when you open your eyes back up, actually lead to what's called a clear flash or a moment of better focus without glasses or contacts. So you would actually do that experiment with the naked eye. So if you have glasses or contacts, you would take your glasses off or take your contacts out, close your eyes, think of that color, and then open up on maybe an eye chart or a picture or something to kind of check and see, did that memory of that color actually lead to a different feeling or actually a different way of seeing? Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting to me to think about not only getting the colors from the sun and our colored lenses and, and our environment, but then also how do we kind of tap into it um, just purely within as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for this aspect. Very, very important in many ways. Um, Nathan, can the Bates method help improve color perception in colorblind people? Yeah, yeah. So that was one of uh, my questions I had for my vision teacher. So I, I was trained by a Bates method teacher in California. And since I had a history of some slight color blindness myself, some red green color blind, um, sometimes at eye doctors, you'll see that test with a bunch of dots and there's a, a number inside. And if you can see the number, you're not color blind. And if you can't see the number, then it might be an indication of some color blindness. So there were a few of those charts that I couldn't see the numbers when I was a kid. So I was curious, like, you know, I, yes, I wanted to improve my myopia and my astigmatism, but maybe my color vision would improve too. And she said that there's a chance that, you know, you could actually, uh, you know, modify the, your color perception too. Um, and I've noticed that I've gotten a little better at those um, tests and, uh, and actually picking out more subtle hues and things like that. So since the Bates method and specifically the sun sandwiches we were doing works a lot with the rods and the cones in the retina. Um, also like Gabrielle, you brought up the melanopsin, the, the other uh, non-visual pathways too, but specifically the cones are those ones that perceive the colors. So if we don't get enough sunlight, it's like, I call them sun sandwiches because it's kind of like food. You're like feeding your eyes by eating sun sandwiches. And when I wore glasses and contacts, that was blocking the light. And so my eyes were starving. They had a very poor diet, a poor light diet, which is potentially why my cones weren't receiving the light and recognizing the colors as optimally as they could. So when I started feeding my eyes more sun sandwiches and actually taking in more light therapy devices and things, it's like they had a more well-rounded diet and they started to actually you know, enjoy new sensations. 
And maybe some of you have, like, I used to hate olives, you know, and pickles. I used to hate those foods. And now my tastes have changed and I actually enjoy them. So it's like my cones used to hate certain colors and they would reject that from the diet, but now they've kind of expanded the palate and, uh, and can kind of take in more. So yeah, kind of a cool possibility to think about as well. Um, but I just wanted to say that even if there is some color blindness, um, what the thing that I enjoy is that even if you're not seeing the color or perceiving the color, you still get the benefit from receiving the color or doing the sunning and things like that. Mm -hmm. Very interesting aspect that it has also an effect on your on your food and on your diet uh, likes and, and dislikes. Very interesting. Thank you. Nathan, I have to ask you very quickly because we are getting also uh, comments in the chat. Please tell us what are the wonderful lights you have in your background? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, as a vision teacher, I'm aware of uh, how bad of a habit it is to stare like when your eyes are just fixed on a screen. So I, I knew I work with a lot of people online. So I knew that um, I would want to bring some movement into my background. So first, I just had this, um, it's called a sunset lamp, because it kind of looks like the golden hour, you know, when the sun is coming in at that nice kind of orange glow. Uh, but that's a static light. So then I brought this one in, which is called an aurora light, like the aurora borealis or the northern lights. So it's a similar kind of thing and you can choose the colors, but it's got the movement to it so that as my vision student looks at my face as we're talking, there's some stimulation in the periphery, which is actually working with the rods. Um, the cones are more for the color perception in the center of your vision. The rods are more for the actually perceiving movement and motion around the edges. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll add a link um, in the chat of the one that I got uh, so you can yes. check it out. So. Yes, please do that so that, so, yeah. that the participants can check out this wonderful uh, light. So thanks for now, uh, Nathan. Uh, let's see what, what uh, questions we are getting in the, for, in the Q and A. Thanks for now. Thank you. And uh, I would like to say hello and welcome now to Masako Shimizu-san from Tokyo. Masako, can you say something that so that we can see you? Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hello. Hello, Masako hello. from to Tokyo. Uh, Masako Shimizu. And I would like also to welcome Haruka-san, who is going to be her translator today. Thanks a lot, Haruka, for helping us. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, my light is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to present uh, Masako-san. Masako is a color light therapist for more than 20 years. And she is the representative of the Association of Color Therapists in Japan. She's the founder of Color Works, a healing space uh, that she runs uh, in Tokyo for many years. Uh, so I'm saying konnichiwa mm -hmm. and welcome. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Mm -hmm. So Masako san. So what do you think about color, light, and health? Yes. ごめんね、はるかさん、皆さんに。はい、えっと、あなたが思う色と光と健康についてはい。えっと、まず最初にあのこのえ、イベントね、プロジェクトを牽引してくださっているガブリエルさんに感謝いたします。First of all, I would like to thank Gabriel who leads Color Light world project from the bottom of my heart. Also, I'd like to thank everyone in the world taking, for taking the time to join us today. ね、えっと、私がね、思うこの、ま、光と色と傾向というところでは、まず光っていうのは、えっと、地球上のすべての命にとって書くことができない要素で、要素だと考えてます。as for light and color, I think light is an essential element for all life on the planet. ここで言う光っていうのは、太陽の光なんですけれども、太陽の光がない暗闇では 
生命は成長することも健康を維持することも当然できないことは、えー、科学的にも生物学的にもね明らかなことですよね。The, sun, uh, the light here means sunlight. In the dark, without sunlight, no life can grow or stay healthy. That's, that is scientifically and biologically well known. で現代みたいなこう科学的な発展がなかった古代の人たちっていうのはあの全世界中でね多くの民族が太陽崇拝を行ってたと言われてるんですね。In ancient times, people didn't have scientific knowledge like nowadays, and many races worship the sun as a god. で古代の人たちが太陽を神と崇めていたのは、まあ、自然と共に生活する生きるということをねしていた。時代なので、まあ、生命を維持するためには太陽の光が必須であるということが分かっていたんだと思うんですね。I believe the people in the ancient times,、uh, they knew sunlight was essential to maintain life while they are living in nature. 太陽の光がなければ呼吸をするための酸素も作れないですし、まあ、栄養素となってくれるね、えー、野菜とか果物もそうだし、動物も育つことができないので、まあ、そうなると私たち人間としては死活問題ですよね。Without sunlight, oxygen is not produced, so we are unable to breathe. Also, vegetables and fruits or animals cannot grow. So, for human, human beings, as it becomes a matter of life and death. だから私たちの体も心も太陽の光を受け取ることで成長したり、まあ、健康な状態を維持しているというふうに言えます。That means both our bodies and minds grow up and stay healthy by receiving sunlight. で太陽の光が少ないと、まあ、私たちの,この体の場合ね、あの細胞分裂がうまく行われなくなってしまうので、まあ、細胞が貧弱だと免疫力が低下して、まあ、臓器なんかもね、働きに支障が出るわけですよね。If sunlight is too weak, our body cell division cannot occur properly, which, occur,、uh, which weaken our immune system and interferes with the functioning of organs. メンタル的にもうつ,症、えー、うつ症状をね、誘発したり、あとネガティブな感情をうまく処理できなくなったりすることもあります。Also, mentally, it causes depression or m a k e us unable to handle emotions. It can cause various disorders. このことからもあの、太陽の光がね、私たちの心と体の健康にとって大切な存在であるということがわかると思うんですね。These tell us how important sunlight is for our mental and physical health. えー、と太陽がないね、えー、暗闇だと、まあ、色は知覚することができないわけですけれどもということは光があって初めて色は存在して、えー、色というものそのものは太陽からの産物っていうふうにも考えることができます。We cannot perceive color in the dark without light.Color exists only in the presence of light.That means we can say color is a gift from the sun. だから太陽の中には赤とか青とか緑とかねいろんな色がまあ含まれているわけなんですけれども私たちがこう日常のあらゆる場面で、えー、色を使うっていうのは実は太陽の光の、えー、代わりとして色を使ってるっていうふうにも考えられるわけです。Sunlight includes various colors such as red, green and so on and that means using colors in our daily life can be said We use colors as an alternative to the sun. ただ光がある世界というのは明るく輝くしさらにこう色がある世界っていうのは鮮やかな豊かさを与えてくれますよねなので色と光っていうのは私たちの心と体のエネルギーとして素晴らしい力を与えてくれる存在っていうことになると思います I think the world with lights is shining brightly And the world with color gives us vivid richness. Colors and lights give s us great power as energy for our minds and bodies. 
Masako-san, in your experience, how do color and light improve our health? で色と光とけん色と光が健康にどう役立つとお考えですか？あの世界にも同じ言葉ざがあるかもしれないんですけど、日本には病は気からという言葉ざがあるんですよね。You may have the same saying, but in Japan we have the saying that disease starts in mind or your mind controls your body。ので。こうストレスがね多様化していくこの現代社会では体の体がのどこが不調が悪いってなって病院行くんだけどこう原因がわからなかったりあの体は健康だったりでもまあ原因はね体が不調だって感じる原因はストレスだっていうふうに判断されることが非常に多くなってるんですよね。In modern society, stress is getting more diverse. Even when you are not feeling well and go see a doctor. To have an examination, there is no problem to report. And in many cases, the doctor says stress causes a physical re reaction. But the body feels pain, or 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 pain, で自覚があるので、体の不調っていうのは対処しやすいわけですよね。でも、心の不調って目に見えないし、自覚しにくいので、よっぽどのストレスがこう感じない限り、結構放置されやすい。で放置した結果、体に SOS を出さなければならないような状態まで陥って、結果としてストレス度合いがすごく大きくなってしまうわけです。うん because Um, we have subjective symptoms. Dealing with physical disorder is not so complicated, but for mental, mental disorders is invisible and also unaware. It tends to leave untreated unless you feel a lot of stress. As a result, the degree of stress increase to the point where an SOS sign appears on your body. だから体に SOS が出る前に心の SOS の対処ができれば常にこう心も体も健康な状態を保つことができると思います。Mm-hmm. であの私はカラーライトセラピストとして、えー、この、ね、カラーライトを使ってメンタルケアをしているんですけれども実際にあの体に不調が、ね、現れているクラントさんも心の軽やかさを取り戻すと同時に体も元気に戻ってしまったりすることが本当にたくさんあります。As a color light therapist, I use color lights for my clients' mental care. Many of my clients with physical symptoms can also be treated with a color light by taking back the lightness of mind. で頭で考えれば考えること複雑化してそもそもの原因が分からなくなってしまうっていうのが結構ね心の問題なんですね。A common mental problem is the more you think about it, the more complicated it becomes. And the underlying problem itself becomes unclear. で複雑化するこの心の状態を作る大きな要因っていうのが多くの場合はこう我慢なんですよねで。心で望むことを我慢したりこう自由であることとか心のままに生きることを自分で禁止してしまうことでこうエネルギーが全体的に重くなります。A major factor causing such a complex state of mind is patience. Putting up with what your heart wants or binding yourself being free and following your heart. This patience makes your energy heavy. この重たいエネルギーから解放されて、こう軽やかな心の状態で、ね、生きるためには、心の声とか本能の声に耳を傾ける必要があるんですね。
if you want to be free from this heavy energy and live with light energy, you need to listen your voice of mind and follow your instincts. でその頭を空っぽにして、えー、心を静かに保つ瞑想っていうのはあの心の声を聞くで最もポピュラーな手法ではあるんですけれども結構瞑想ってあのスキルを身につけるのに訓練が必要なわけですよね。Meditation helps us to empty our head and keep your mind calm. This is the most popular way to hear the voice of mind, but it takes time to improve meditation skills. でそこで役立ってくれるのがこういったカラーライトなんですよね。ですごくこう微細な波長であ,のあるカラーライトを浴びることでこう脳波が瞑想状態にスイッチングしやすくなるんですね。でそうすると、本能からのメッセージが受け取りやすくなります。So, the color light therapy works in that case. Exposed to fine wavelengths of color light makes it easier for our brain to switch to a meditate condition and catch message from our instincts. でこの、えー、と光を浴びているときの、ね、メッセージっていうのは、うんとその時感じることもあるし、あと光を浴びて数日後に、えー、気づきとかひらめきとなって現れることもあります。The message may appear while in the light, or it may appear as notice or inspiration a few days later. で光を浴びている時のそのメッセージの出方っていうのは、こう映像で見えたり、言葉として聞こえたり、こう体で感じたりっていうね、人によってそれぞれなんですけれども、あの外からのアドバイスではなくて、自分の目で見て、自分の耳で聞いて、自分の体で感じるので、ものすごい深いところで、そのメッセージを受け取ることができるんです。The message when near in the light can be seen as a visual, heard as a words, or felt by the body. It depends on the person, but、um, it's not somebody's Advice, but you saw it your, with your own eyes, heard it with your own ears, and felt it with your own body, so that you can take it deep in your heart. Oh, thank you.、Uh, Masako san, what do you hope to achieve by working as color light therapist, benefiting from color and light? カラーライトセラピーをお仕事にされてると思うんですけどそのなんですか恩恵カラーライトセラピーでできることっていうのは何かありますか健康な、まあ、今までお話ししたような健康な心と体で、えー、軽やかな状態に、ね、なるためにはあのカラーライトって本当に効率がいいわけですねで効率よく、うん、とエネルギーを変えたりエネルギーをチャージしたりするという意味で非常にスピードがあるものだと思います。In order to keep your mind and body healthy, we need to have light energy. And colors, color lights can change and charge energy efficiently, and it's very speedy. ただ、まあ、この、ね、カラーライトを持たなきゃいけないというわけでもなく、まあ、私たちが毎日の生活の中で色を見たり、色を食べたり、色を着たりっていうね、その様々な方法で、色と触れ合うことそのものが、その心と体を健康に維持するためには、最も大切なセラピーだなっていうふうに感じます。But that means you don't have to stick with the huge、um, color light therapy tool, but In our, in our daily lives, we can see colors in various ways, such as choosing clothes, having meals with nice tableware, s and looking at the beautiful scenery around us. That's the most important therapy to keep our mind and body healthy, I think. で一人一人がね、皆さんが自分の心に幸せな虹をかけるために、色をと光を楽しみながらね活用していただけることを私は望んでます
I hope everyone can find joy in living with colors and lights and put a rainbow of happiness in your own hearts. Uh, lovely, Masako-san. Thanks a lot for mentioning that. Uh, we can say that the circle closes because our first panel was about the topic, the deep beauty of color and light. And you said now our kind of closing words. Thanks a lot. その前のお話でディープビューティーについて前回のセッションで話されたそうなんですけど、今そのクローズのこと、服のこととかを話していただいたのでありがとうございます。And now we have an, a lovely announcement. It's a big joy for myself. Masako-san has translated my book. えっと、あ、あ、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、
then uh, I think Howard Wu says acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, so a hormone too, used by the vagal nerve, calms the heart. Thanks for this tool. Thanks to uh, Rike. Um, then Rike has posted uh, the Amazon link where you can obtain the color therapy glasses. So you may want to have a look at that. Then uh, Howard is mentioning the blue green aura ceiling lights of Nathan. And Nathan has posted the link uh, to the lights where you can find these lights. And the other light is called Sunset Lamp. Thanks for, uh, yeah. And thanks for the positive feedbacks we are already getting. So I'm coming back here and I think Montaha wants to ask a question. Please, Montaha. First of all, thank you so much, Gabriele, for bringing the amazing uh, Rike and Nathan and Masako-san today to us. Uh, fascinating uh, topics. Each of them has a wealth of experience and stuff. Uh, that I learned today a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, I just wanted to stop a little bit uh, at the point where Rika mentioned how our bodies uh, observe, uh, absorb the light, but then also project the light. And that made me think of uh, what is called aura, like each of us is projecting a certain aura with a certain color and many of us know about this. However, what I was like thinking about, which we don't always uh, pay attention to, is that let's say this person, any person, has or is going through negative stages in their life and have a lot of negative feelings. Uh, and so when they are projecting their lights out, <laughs> they are also projecting those negative vibes with that light, right? And so sometimes when you're meeting someone and then you have this negative feeling, like I don't want to be with this person because this person is affecting me negatively. And obviously this is at the subconscious level. We, we don't know it. Sometimes even you meet someone, I don't know, in a restaurant, in a bar, even at the shopping mall, whatever. And then you come back home and you get sick and you don't know why you get sick in your body or you get affected and then it's like you bring their negative vibe with you home and that stays with you sometimes lingering and you don't know the reason and i just wanted to put this out there for conversation i don't know if it's worth talking about it uh ricker i don't know if you would like to comment on this since you brought this topic well, I think that uh, that you're right. That uh, you could you could say that the energy that we are vibrating out is uh, could be color. It because it's a frequency, a sound, a color, a smell, a hormonal vibe, um, and we are also. And this is not the topic today, I know. And we're also made of a lot of water uh, that has uh, vibrating vibrating um, frequencies inside, which also um affects so we affect each other a lot in that way so i just i just felt like saying when you say that we can meet somebody and and um we absorb their negativity it's also the other way just so we remember that that is also absorbing all the positivity from being with with other people like today um it, it's always lifting the spirit to be with other people that have interest in the color just um but yes, for sure. I don't know. Um, I don't know um, what else to say about it. But but for sure, we are very um, affected by uh, everything that surrounds us, everything alive and and also that is not alive, because it all vibrates, no matter what. It all has a form, a shape, and energy that that gives us um, uh, projects. Uh, what can you say that projects uh, an energy back to us? But just to round that up 
I think that it's also very important to note that uh, our body is open or closed to feelings, emotions, shapes, surroundings, depending on how we are functioning inside. So like you say, you can, you can have a negative energy impulse that, that gets to you. But if you are in balance, if you are feeling fine that day, you will not respond to that because your system will maybe send out more positive energy towards that person. So that person gets a positive feeling instead of you receiving that negative feeling, which is a very important thing. It's very important that, um, very important thing that, that I work with is this um, uh, being able to absorb light and energy, but also in that way, not having to take light and energy in that is not good for you. So both ways, I guess. Does that make any sense towards what you're yes, saying? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I must add that uh, it's the same thing, the power of uh, either positivity or negativity with the words that we speak out because also they have yes. this vibration and energy that affect us uh, personally when I feel or hear something that I don't want to accept and allow into my body, I usually say cancel, cancel. I always say it in, out loud, cancel, cancel. That means I do not accept this. <laughs> well, that's a good one to bring on. Yeah. That's a good, a good, uh, good idea. I think that, that um, when you are a therapist, uh, as a, or I can, I should not speak for everybody, but as a therapist, I use the egg I don't know if you guys know the egg, but it's like putting an egg around you and you have your feet out on the ground. So you get the, the, the grounding and then you put your arms out and you can, you can put energy out through the egg, but the eggshell will protect me from um, the disease and sickness and balancing of all these people that I'm treating um, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And, and this is very important when you're a therapist and, um, treating many many people a day if you don't take care of yourself uh, is very important but also I always wash my hands in cold water to get off that thing so maybe it's also a way of saying um, what did you call it you say decline decline cancel 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 yeah it means okay. I am canceling yes. the negativity that I am sensing yes not receiving thank you <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, does somebody of the panelists want to add something? Nathan, do you want to add something to this uh, question? Just briefly, I, I wanted to mention how a lot of times we hear that saying about somebody will have like a sparkle in their eye or, a, you know, a, a shimmer or a sheen to their eye and, and it kind of, you know, or, or if somebody doesn't have that, you can sort of notice it's more of sort of dull eyes maybe. And so this concept of, of not just the eyes receiving the light, but they actually can emit light and reflect light as well. Um, that was one thing I, I received some comments like that as I started to like sun my eyes more and, and take more light in. It was like my eyes could actually send more light out as well. Um, so that, that could be a little, little connection there um, that we may have sort of heard that saying of having that like shimmer in the eye and maybe we can achieve that by just, you know, working with the light. Um, Masako-san, do you want to say something about this question that sometimes we are negatively affected by the aura of others? Now, 例えばそのモールとかに出かけた時でもいいんですけど、あの、人によっては<笑> 例えば、冷たい水に手をつけるとか、今キャンセルキャンセルっても口に出して言うとか、そういう話が例が出たんですけど、何かそういうありますかえっと、ネガティブなものを受け取らない。日本のね、え、なんか沖縄、え、波動法
何それ<笑>沖縄のエネルギーワークなんだけどあここまで訳すあ大丈夫ですよあの自分のオーラってものすごく大きいじゃないですかで人混みに行ったらこのオーラをパラパラパラって畳むの。そうすると人の波長ももらわないし自分も自分を守れるっていうのをあの沖縄のエネルギーワークをする方に学んだことがあります。<笑> well, やってる私。<笑> um, when, when she felt something like not, not good energy, like negative energy,、uh, she learned energy work in Okinawa. Do you know Okinawa? It's like South Island of Japan. And there is a one energy work、um, that we have like big, huge aura around us, around our body. But when she met something negative energy, she s h r i n k the aura around her and then she p r o t e c t herself. That's the way she p r o t e c t herself.、Ah. Mm-hmm. So, do you mean, Masako san, that you make your aura smaller to protect yourself? So, no, my, 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 In the chat box, you can see the link sent from Kaori. That's the video of how to do. What is it? Sensora session. Sensora session. So you can check the link, and it's, about, it's written in English, right? Yes, English. So please check it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, so thanks a lot, Masako san. So, this yes. is、uh, you should absolutely、uh, kind of register this link of Masako san because it's a Sensora session,、mm-hmm. Sensora color light session, which she also has done for us in the Zuminas. Quite amazing.、Uh, mm-hmm. When you have the time, take it to do that. I would like to、uh, add one, one little.、Uh, Thing to the question of Montaha. It's、um, well, in the、um, color systems I've been working with, there's a specific color, it's a tu- color turquoise called it's a color of、um, physical and mental immunity. And I find this、uh, correlation interesting that for us, it's sometimes we need to be aware to make a- ourselves sometimes mentally immune. To the thoughts and feelings of others, so this doesn't affect us too much. And I, in my one of my systems I'm working with, I find it interesting that one color is related to the mental immunity, our capacity of detaching from the thoughts of others, is at the same time the color of body immunity. And that means that actually, if we have the capacity of Standing back to the thoughts and feeling of others, it's very good for our health because it doesn't affect our body immunity. And thanks for mentioning, Rike, the thing with the egg. That's a wonderful method of, of、uh, practicing body immunity. Yes,、yeah, so do we have,、uh, let's see, another question. Yeah, so we have Masako's color system and we are getting thank you. So, does anybody have another question for today? Okay, so then I think we are good in time. I say many, many thank you to all of you for being here. Domo arigato. To all the Japanese friends, domo arigato. Lovely being with all of you. Thanks to all the wonderful panelists, Rike, Nathan, Masako san, for their awesome presentation, presentations. Let's、uh, do more of that in the coming year. Please stay tuned at the Color Lights World Project. 
um, subscribe to my newsletter over my website if you want. And um, please look out for the next uh, newsletter I'm going to send out around the holidays because you are going to obtain a present from the Color Lights World Project that was our lovely Color Lights Gifts to the World event one year ago. And I'm going to include the videos, two videos of these two sessions in the upcoming newsletters. So thanks a lot and hope